<laughs> Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Uh, yeah, well, this is the pirate session. It said it was up for grabs, so I grabbed it. Uh, I'm going to talk about macaroons. Who, is, who of you has ever touched a macaroon file? OK. And uh, I guess you wondered what they were. Or who already knows how they work? Well, OK. Anyway, um, it's going to be a bit technical, but uh, I try to keep it as, as understandable as possible. Well, first, I'm going to tell you what, what they are, then how they work, and then how they are used in L&D. And yeah, I've been pretty involved uh, with them and uh, in L&D, so I'm going to tell you what I was working on, or still am. And if there's still time in the end, I'm going gonna, gonna to try to answer some questions. Uh, yeah, what are they? They're uh, uh, cookies on steroids, you could say. The, the paper has been around for a while now. It's nothing new or, or nothing that's uh, in relation with Bitcoin especially. But um, Alex Axelrod uh, first implemented them to be used in L&D. And if anyone wants to read the paper, it, the URL is there. But uh, it's a bit complicated to understand from the paper, or maybe that's just my problem. Because when I read something like this, I go like, uh, OK, uh, mm -hmm. HMAC, yeah, chain, nested, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to try to explain exactly this. So is this large enough? Yeah, I think so. We have this nested and chained setup. And what uh, an HMAC does is just put the key and the message together and hash it in a secure way. So these first three stages are the basis of every macaroon. We have something that's called uh, the root key. That's like the private key, and the issuer of the macaroon should never reveal it. Because if you have that, then you can uh, forge macaroons. Then you have an identifier, which is basically the payload of the macaroon. You can encode any information in it and um, it will be signed with the root key. And from there on, you can add uh, any number of caveats, which are conditions, which tell the, the receiver of a macaroon that not only the uh, rules in the identifier apply, but you also can restrict these rules even further by adding more caveats. So why is this, this uh, HMAC set up with the chain? What, what this allows us is because the issuer of the macaroon never reveals his private key, uh, we only, if we get the macaroon, we only get, ever get the signature that is this hash here. So after two steps of HMAC. If we don't know the private key, we can never go back and find out this signature here. We can only go from top down. If we know the root key, we can reconstruct everything. But if we don't know an in-between signature, we cannot go back there. Or in a very specific way, if I only know the signature with a restriction applied to it, I cannot take away the restriction. So if I get the macaroon that has a, a caveat in it, I have no cryptographic way to remove that. What that allows me to do is I can myself add further restrictions, so narrow the possibilities down what someone can do with this macaroon, but nobody in the chain can ever take away a restriction. Yeah, let's, let's uh, see an example. The left side is what, what actually happens with the HMAX, and the right side is what is in the macaroon you get. So if you get this binary blob, it's just a serialized version of what you see on the right. We have this identifier. As I said, it's, it's just a blob of bytes that is basically signed in the first step. There's also some meta information, like the location. This could be a URL where the, the endpoint that has issued this, or where you could get some further information. This is never taken into a, a signature, so it's really just meta information. And then I can add 
caveats. And for every caveat, I add a new level of uh, HMAC, and I only ever publish the last signature and I serialize that into the macaroon. Or let's take an example. I want, uh, I'm building a service and I want myself to have read access to it. So I just take a, a string like, yeah, my username and I'm allowed to read. Um, location, yeah, we're in Munich, but it doesn't really ha uh, matter. And I want to apply a condition that this is only valid for a month. So it, will, it must be used before 1st of July. And then I get, get the signature for this. And I built uh, an online tool where you can actually have a look at how it works. That we have uh, signature starts with 85081B. And if I go ahead and type this in exactly, uh, oh yeah, maybe I should remember what I wrote, yeah. Um, okay, it's, it's JSON serialized here, so uh, the, the signature is in base64, but I can also show it as binary. And if I know where to look, I can see that I have here the last 64 bytes are exactly the signature, which we see is 5081BFC6. So this is yeah, basically what I've shown here. So it's deterministic. If you have the same key and the same ID, you always get the same signature, of course. But if you don't know the secret key, I cannot take away this restriction. OK, so why is this useful? Why do we do that? What I can do now, if I get a macaroon from my LND node, and it's valid for a month, I can give that macaroon to someone else. But I can further restrict it. I can say, yeah, OK, you can access my, my service for a month, but only from this IP. So only you can use it from your computer. And myself, without knowing the, the root key, can add further restrictions. So I just take the, the original macaroon I, I got with the signature. I put the signature in as the key for the next HMAC iteration. As a data or the message for HMAC, I put in the caveat the string. And what I get out is the new signature. And in the new macaroon, I only put the new signature. So the person who I give it to cannot go back. So this will be secret and kept on myself. And the new owner will get this, this new signature. And if we do this here, we can add a new caveat. And we see that it should be somewhere here. D1287. Uh, yeah, D1287. So yeah, I can, I can go ahead and add further restrictions. And you can never open them up if you don't know the private key. Questions up to here. <laughs> is it, was it more or less uh, understandable? Is, is it, was it too fast? Maybe, yeah. OK, yeah? What's the range of caveats? Like, the number of that. Well, the complexity and uh, of, like, yeah. options. Good question. Yeah, what, what can, can we put? Yeah, yeah. Well, the question is, what can we put as caveats? What's the range? What's the feature? Well, that depends on the service. The service that you send the macaroon to has to understand this caveat. If it, it, the service doesn't understand it, he either just rejects it or ignores it. So yeah, very good question. Uh, yeah, what do we put in there? Um, so let's talk specifics. How does LND use them? Well, we have this root key. It's stored in the macaroon DB file. It's encrypted there with your uh, passphrase that you also use for your seed. So every time you do LNCLI unlock, you also unlock the macaroon root key, and then uh, your node can validate macaroons. Uh, the identifier contains this blob 
This is an example, and if you look closely, you see a lot of read, write, read, write. So this is basically the admin macaroon. And the, the list of permissions you have access to is encoded in this identifier. So it's like a, a, a substructure, a binary, where there's basically an array of yeah, these uh, group like invoices you can read and write. And if you have a look at the read-only macaroon, you, will, you won't see any write. So the identifier contains a lot of stuff that is then signed. Uh, the location is static, it's always LND. And there are, per default, or at the moment, there are three macaroons that are generated. The, the read-only, as I said, there, there would be all methods, but only read. The invoice, which you can only create invoices. And admin, which allows you to do anything. Uh, but at the moment, there are only two types of caveats that are supported. One is the time before, and it then accepts a UTC string, a UTC timestamp, and the other is the IP address. Only one is really used at the moment. Every time you do an LN CLI anything, it takes your macaroon, the one you specify, and applies a caveat with the default timeout of 60 seconds. So the macaroon that is transmitted over the, the network is actually only valid for 60 seconds. But you probably haven't ever noticed that it's, it's a new macaroon that's going between. And so if, if anyone would listen on this connection and would steal your macaroon, it would still only uh, limit them to only 60 seconds. And you can overwrite this value if you're very paranoid. Do it, uh, yeah. Try half a second. Maybe have a time difference then between client and server, but you can do it. And <coughs> other one is not used at the moment, but you could encode your IP address. But then, of course, you get into trouble if you're on IPv6 versus 4 or DNS or whatever. But it, it can be used. Yeah. So. Uh, what am I working on is yeah, a lot of stuff that Alex uh, put feature requests in for, so I try to implement them. Um, yeah, I don't know if you have time to go through all of them, but it's, it's basically a way to, to create new macaroons with your custom permissions. They don't only have these three predefined macaroons. Uh, I did some integration tests. Uh, I introduced a new caveat that basically hashes all the, the inputs of a gRPC request and then adds a caveat. So even if someone steals your macaroon, it can only be used for this specific request with these input parameters. Um, yeah, it's something with stateless initialization so that the macaroon files are never created on the server. And then the last one, which I think uh, could be very promising, is uh, I, the, this idea of accounts. So you could create like an account on your LND and give it a balance, and then encode the macaroon to only be able to spend the balance of this account. So I could create an account, put 10,000 Satoshi in, create a macaroon, and give that to someone. And they could just connect to your node, spend these 10,000 Satoshis, and yeah, that's it. And I put the very first basic version in of that. And yeah, this could be extended to uh, recurring payments and yeah, weekly or monthly. And you always, you always uh, can cancel these accounts. So it's, it's always, you're always in control over the funds you, you give out. So if you want to cancel a subscription, yeah, I just delete the account on, on my node, and the other party cannot, cannot get any money anymore. And yeah, what could we do in the future? Uh, what I'm probably going to implement next is, at the moment, you can only uh, specify permissions for groups of operations, like on-chain, off-chain, channels. But it would be nice if we could restrict it on, on specific RPC calls. So I could create a macaroon that can only do send to route or whatever. Uh, yeah, the recurring payments, as I said before, but I'm going to wait for the first one to be merged, because otherwise it will be complex. 
And yeah, the whole thing that they didn't even mention in the whole talk is there's also the concept of third party caveats. So I, as, a, as a restriction, I can also say like, yeah, and as an addition, you need to go to this service, get a, a login or an authentication token from this service and prove cryptographically that you've logged in. Maybe, yeah, let's say authenticate with Google and come back and present the new macaroon. So you could also do uh, restrictions on other party tokens. Yeah, that's it already. If, yeah, if you have questions, I try to answer them. Uh, thanks. <laughs> yes. So the user decides when to, when they use a macaroon and how long they can use the macaroon. Yes, the the default macaroons that LND creates doesn't have any restrictions on them other than the operations like the read write stuff. Per default there's no caveat. And then every time you use uh, Allen CLI, it, it adds a caveat for 60 seconds, but you can do basically anything with that macaroon. So if your admin macaroon gets stolen, the only option you have is to issue a new root key. Yeah, you could do that by deleting the macaroon DB. Don't know if that has side effects, so maybe don't do that. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, mm, root key rotation should also be added. But yeah, basically the, the default macaroons are not restricted in any way. Yes. The benefits of using macaroons over, say, like just general key pairs or hash and free images is it's just the granularity? Uh, yeah, the, the benefits of using macaroons for the stream uh, is that, you, th that the user can decide uh, himself to further restrict what, what can be done with the macaroon. And even down the line, you could, you could uh, yeah, create like a chain of people holding a macaroon and uh, everyone down in the chain has, has uh, smaller features that he can use. But uh, you can redistribute it so you can um, further, yeah, you can give access to something you own to someone else and then they can even give it further. So, um, yeah, y y you, can, you can do more stuff, I think, without the original issuer always issuing something new. So, the, the L&D only generates the macaroon once and then he doesn't, it doesn't concern him. Or it, yeah. Does that answer you? Yeah, you, you can still issue keep uh, like you can have like a, a, a main main authority and a smaller authority and a smaller authority and that, and they all issue different key pairs to authority, uh, lesser authority. Yes. Yeah, you could do the same with uh, just key pairs, but also adding these semantics of uh, t uh, yeah telling the. The verifier of a macaroon, what what it can be done with it, uh, it could add a, a lot of new features. I, I hope, yeah. But yeah, of course you can do the same with other techniques. Yeah, it's just um, someone chose the macaroons, and uh, as far as I'm aware, only L and D uses them, right? Or you know, I think C Lightning. So. So in LND, if I delete my macaroons and I restart LND, it will regenerate them, right? But does that mean that the previous macaroons are then still valid? Because as you explained, they yeah. are, right? Yeah, the question is what happens if you delete the macaroon files? If you delete the dot macaroon, LND will go ahead and just create new ones from the same key. So the old ones will be valid still. If you find them, they will still be valid. And the new ones as well. But if you delete the macaroon.db where the encrypted root key is located in, I guess LND will also recreate it, but then you get a new key and all other keys are invalid. Yeah. So if you just de de delete the dot macaroon, it doesn't really matter as long as you have physical access to the hard drive. I have a second question too. Yeah. Um, cool. Do you have any information on what kind of um, external wallets that connect to LND via the macaroons? implement some kind of safety um, mechanisms. For example, you said uh, LNCLI has this 60 second timeout, but like, would you know what like Zap or Shango does um, 
theoretically, it could be quite a good procedure to simply always put a, not only a time lock in, but also just the, its own IP, right? There's not really a harm in, in restricting the, uh, the macaroon that's in use. Yeah. Question is, uh, are there already mobile wallets or other wallets that support uh, these caveats? Um, as far as I know, not really. I know that Shango uh, wants to use the stateless initialization because it uh, spins up a node on a, on a cloud um, VM somewhere and uh, I think he wants to implement it so no, no unencrypted files are on the cloud. So he's working on that, but other, other than that, I don't know. Uh, if you use, yeah, what I said, always use the IP. Yeah, if you're in internal networks or maybe in a Docker environment, you maybe have a different IP inside and out, and maybe you're, the, the server doesn't also sees another one because it's behind the proxy. So it can lead to more problems. But yeah, as a safety feature, it, it should be a good idea, yeah. But yeah, I, I'm not aware of any wallets using anything specific. Yeah. Yes? Do you have examples? Uh, have you used it in production, or do you have examples for what you would use it for? Like yeah, have I used it before in production? Uh, no, not yet. I <coughs> haven't really played around with the, um, the accounting yet, but uh, I think I could see some use cases for that. Yeah, maybe. Um, I could create an account on my note, get, tell my mom, yeah, okay, just give me 20 bucks and uh, here's your Allen uh, or your SAP wallet and she can scan a QR code and she can spend these 20 bucks from my machine. So I could be like my family provider. But other than that, I personally don't have any uh, ideas that we could use it. But yeah, that's what all you are for, right? I'm not, not good with ideas, just implementing them. <laughs> yes? So uh, if I wanted to give my kid his allowance in Bitcoin, for example, like say, um, and with the restriction, he can only spend 50,000 Satoshi every 24 hours. Would that be something that you could do with macaroons? Yeah, the uh, question is could we do allowance, uh, daily allowance with the macaroon? Yeah, it, that's exactly what, what the goal of these accounts is. At the moment it's just a one-time balance, but uh, it, it uh, already added flags for recurring and then you could say one day, one week, one month. So yeah, that's exactly what, what, what you could do with that. Not yet, because it's uh, yeah, not, not very far along, but yeah, in the future of course. Yeah, and I can add to that. There's also like, uh, you could do like cool stuff with like web apps, like web LN apps, for example, that you could, instead of like, like approving every payment, if you go to like, if you use this web app, you could like give it like 10,000 Satoshi for this app, and then you can spend it at will using this macaroon, but only up to that point, which is pretty cool. Yes, yeah, exactly. Other questions? Okay. It's kind of expanding so. the restrictions of Bitcoin script on a second layer. Yeah, it's like self forking in. Yeah. <laughs> so you make it a little closer to Turing and the uh, without actually making Bitcoin script. All right. Thank you very much. I think we're run out of time anyway, so thanks a lot.